Um, let me um, let me just uh, go to the event and pull up that draft agenda. Where is the call in number? Where is the calling number? Yes, the phone Maybe in. Somebody can find it. Let me just look. I'm going to put it in the chat. There you are. If you ever need to find that from a meeting, you can go to the participants tab, click the carrot there, and click invite, and then the dialogue pops up. And then on the bottom left, it'll have copy invite link and copy invitation. If you click copy invitation, then you can open up a, like a Word document or any text document. And you can paste in there and the entire invitation will show up, which has all of the dial-in numbers. Thank you very much. I had the Zoom tab already open with the phone number right there. I just needed to go into that tab. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let me just share the document, right? First of all, I think that we need to do a little kind of check in and be kind to each other and come in with the best intention to make this a successful convention for the party to grow long term. And uh, just ground ourselves. And um, I'm just going to leave it up to uh, Tasha. I'm going to, I think I'm going to share the screen and I'm going to let Tasha help us guide us through this. Thank you very much, Tasha. Sure. Um, I'm trying to get my brain enough wrapped around um, where we are to see what's useful. Um, so, I understand that you all have a, a group of essentially meeting agreements that you use about how you're going to interact with each other. Um, I think I copied it over into my own agenda notes. Um, and so yeah, somebody, we, can somebody share the link to behavior? the chat room? Well, I can stick this. I will put this in the chat directly. Seth, you want the link to what? The the doc with the agenda. Excuse me, which you, one? The one you were sharing. So here's the rules of behavior. I'll, I think I can share the. So Seth, that that's linked to the convention web page. It's the draft uh, agenda that we created and have been kind of working on on. I think that's the link. Yeah, looks like somebody else put it in too. And I can uh, send the can do the rules of conduct. I just put them in the chat directly. Perfect. We also, I want to, there is also another um, how to treat each other that's on the steering committee meetings at the top of the steering committee meetings. Okay. So do you want us to go through that document? I I don't know that we need to go through it. I'd like people just take a moment and read the piece in the chat that's labeled rules of behavior and just make sure we feel like we can do that tonight. Does everybody see it? Is it visible? Is, am I sharing the screen? I'm reading it right now, Natalie. Give me a moment, please. Oh, I just wanted to confirm that you could read it. Yeah, I see it in chat. In the chat. Okay.
I'm willing to play by your rules, Tasha. These are not my rules. These are the organization's rules. I, I didn't will... make them up. Where did they come from? Those are rules of conduct that we distribute to anybody who uh, wants to use a database and all of that. You, you, supply, you supply these, Natalie? They are on our public folders under guidelines and policies. Mm -hmm. These are rules of conduct that were approved in 2007. Well, of course, I'm obliged to 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 be uh, in league with these. I accept them. Let's let's move on to our meeting. I have. Um, a, a, Hang on one second. Let's just check to make sure everybody else has had time to read them. Could folks um, give me a thumbs up icon if you're done reading them? Uh, this is Justin. I'm sorry. The link in the chat, it seems that the, both these links seem to be taking me to the agenda. Yes. And right above those links is I pasted the rules of behavior in as a text. Ah, uh, OK. Sorry. That's fine. So let's just give other folks a chance to make sure they've read the rules and everybody's on board. I, I just know, pasted mine onto like... a sticky so I wouldn't lose them. Okay, great. And Chuck, I do see your hand. I'm just waiting to make sure everybody's caught up. Everybody read them. So if anybody wants more time to read them, would you use the little thumbs up to let me know that? Like, I, I, guess, I, want more time. I guess I'm being dense. I'm still, I'm sorry, Tasha, where, where, where are they? So These in are... the chat, they should be in the chat. Although if you came in after I posted them, they won't be there. Let yeah, me just, I just, I'm just I just rep reposted them. Okay, great. So these are in our policy guidelines uh, and policies. Uh, in the public documents. And these are rules of conduct that, that have been approved way back. Justin, just say you agree with them and let's move well, on. Well, I'm sure I do. But... It's, it, this is PGP documents. If you haven't read it already, then you failed yeah. in your duties. But let's move on. We can give him a minute. I, he just okay. got so here. Link, the link took me to the Google Drive that has a lot of files. Okay. Let me. Uh, what's the what's the title of the file? It's we have to make this as easy. I mean, can we please make these things as easy as possible for the membership? Yes, these are. This is clunky. Uh, these are in our. There is a maybe. I've, here is the link. I may have posted, you know, the folder, but uh, these are in the public documents, guidelines, and policies. I have collated all of the policies that we've ever approved. So everything is what's the title of the file? It's called email rules of conduct. Thank you very much. I see it now. Mm -hmm. And on the uh, SCC. And just to be clear, like the thing I'm inviting people to agree to right now is literally posted in the chat. The words are posted in the chat. Mm -hmm. I'll flip back to Zoom. I'm, I'm in the other view right now. Thank you for sharing that in the chat. That's helpful too. I'm good. Yeah, right. I'm on board. Thank you. Uh, thanks for indulging me. Yes. So let me just make sure that I understand your goals for the meeting tonight and how long you're expecting the meeting to be. So as I understand our goals for tonight, we are trying to ensure that we have some agreement about what the agenda is going to look like for the September 17th convention. Is that correct? That's our goal tonight? Correct. Okay. And how long are y'all expecting this meeting to be? Until nine o'clock. Until nine. Okay. So we have an hour and 15 minutes at this point. Okay. Great. So 
Chuck, you had your hand in the air. So I just want to just communicate how we function. And I know Dan has communicated with you by email uh, earlier in the day, maybe yesterday, about how we function and how we function is important. And our process is that when we start a convention, we acknowledge the minutes from the prior convention, accept them into the official record, or correct anything that needs correction. So there, this is actually, I guess you would say prescribed. There's no deviating from this. So there's debate about accepting the minutes from the March convention, because the minutes from the March convention say that the convention accepts the validity of the January convention and dismissed the SEC rejection of that convention. Now, after the March convention, the SEC has reaffirmed its rejection of the March convention. Uh, conven uh, convention. So now we are in a, a um, legal, um, by our bylaws and constitution uh, divide, and the SEC insists they were okay and right. I insist they were wrong. And that the, the first order of business is for the convention in September to review the facts of what happened and make a decision. Right. And that and, I and, see that on the agenda at 11.30 a.m. Yes, but but the method by which we decide this, all this, this business of liquid democracy and OPA voting, no. This is going to happen by those at present in a convention. We're going to just, by show of hands, decide if we're going to accept the minutes or not. And then the next order of business is to accept into the record uh, the agenda. And a, a sub piece of this is to accept into the record who's going to facilitate. So that's not stated, but it's implicit in all of this in the record. So check out. That's I just wanted to be clear about that. There's no there's no deviation here. So we just need to I, basically I hear you, Chuck. I hear we just need to allocate time to go through the process. I hear your position. I, I hear your position, Nathalie. We are not gonna have an argument tonight because we both both parties, because there's two parties to this, the SEC and the Lane Liberty Group, have already debated this. So we're not gonna debate it tonight. At the convention, we're going to have what I suggest to approve the minutes as is or not approve them as is, decide whether the votes were uh, democratic or not. We should just put it to the convention. So what I'm suggesting is to have the Lane Liberty Caucus give be have it like five minutes of why they should be approved, and then the SEC provide like their five minutes or you know whatever time we want to allocate why they should not be approved and then make, we could use we could use the zoom polling you know we we do need a track record like hand raising is not going to work we already have approximately 40 people registered at the convention so we need to find tools to vote these things in and I'm suggesting to find, we don't need to do OPA vote, but people were going to have questions. What were the resolutions? You know, maybe the text of the resolutions, you know, so they might, the, the public who's going to come to the convention might need a little bit more time. So what I'm suggesting is again, why, you know, um, statement of why they should be approved, statement of why they should be rejected, and the SEC proposes that the resolutions go through a true consensus process using the large group consensus process that we now have in place. So we don't need to debate it at nauseam at this meeting, but have some form of resolution through the convention. Let me let me ask a, a process question. Sure. Let's see if just because I want to make sure that we're thinking uh, clearly about the order that things need to happen and sort of what the impacts of that are. So if 
if we were to use an OPA vote system, as Nathalie, as you had suggested as the original possibility, and I hear you that you have some flexibility about it, yeah. right? So I'm hearing that. If we were to use the OPA vote, my understanding is that that would delay the decision itself. Mm -hmm. So we would the discussion would happen and then we wouldn't know what the resolution was. The question, my question as a facilitator, as putting that hat firmly on is, does not knowing impact the rest of the meeting? Is, are there any other decisions that are predicated on which way that one falls out? So it sounds like either a Zoom poll process or an OPA vote process could work. What's the status of abs the, the rules around absentee ballots for this kind of decision? adopting of the minutes does the does your do your requirements say this is people present is it just the people present who approve the minutes or does it allow for absentee ballots about approving the minutes that's a rules question only only people raise, present. Uh, Chuck, raise your hands if you want to speak dan has his hand raised. Say. okay dan candidates ballot initiatives SCC elections. That's it. And the text of this, uh, the text in this uh, proposal, in this uh, this uh, proposed agenda here, is incorrectly implying that the SCC can instruct a convention to adopt a rule. If they're going to be putting text like that in there, I would like the right to put text in this proposition from Lane and Liberty Caucus, because uh, if if the convention itself is going to be containing these arguments. I think that's tilting the scale right off the bat. I'm look. I'm putting here people, uh, in you know people at the convention where you need to use hand voting, invoking bylaws, convention rules, shall be a lot of blah blah blah. I I put your statement. I think that that reflects what you guys did in a very. No, I, my statement is what I say, not your interpretation of okay, it. So I, I'd like to be able text. to type it in. Provide the text. So. Can I ask Natalie a question, um, Tasha? I think Susie is on the, sorry, I'm going to zip it because I'm speaking okay. on stack. Susie is on the stack. Susie is on the stack and I'm, I think that if we try to stick to direct stack and nothing else in this meeting, we're going to go nuts. So let's just try to be at least marginally flexible about answering specific we questions. Are. Are. Okay. Let's, so, let's, so Chuck, hang on, let's go to Susie yeah. and then we'll come back to this question. Susia? I'm, I'm sorry, I waited so long I forgot what I wanted to say. You asked a question and I was going to answer it. And um... Okay, can I, let's go straight to me then, because I'm looking at the screen. And the screen says proposition from SEC. This is what Dan was addressing. And I see, I see the text that's hyperlinked or hypercolored with yellow. Then I see an underlined sentence that says, Natalie, sense. please let me speak. The you changed it. Okay, so leave it. The state coordinating committee shall establish procedures for when and how a convention vote will be taken using absentee ballots. But the preceding sentence, which is highlighted in yellow, it says it's... that votes that are specific to the three categories. So Natalie, are you conflating that words? sentence, the statement, the state coordinating committee shall establish absentee votings to categories outside of those listed above uh, in the sentence above? Chuck, point of so. process, point of process. The reason these things are highlighted is because people put comments on the agenda. It's not because I am highlighting them. Okay, but who underlined the sentence about the SEC authority to interpret, uh, no, maybe it's shall establish procedures. Oh, I, can, I can highlight this one. If you want. Okay. So Natalie, just Hang, let's pause, 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 pause. You two are talking past each other. Take yes, a breath. She's not, she's. You are both talking past each other. Just hold Tasha. up a second and let me do my job. Okay. So Chuck, as I understand the question that you're asking, so let me make sure I'm understanding it, right? As I understand the question that you're asking, you are asking whether the underlined sentence that 
says that the state coordinating committee shall establish procedures for when and how a convention vote will be taken using absentee ballots is an attempt to change the requirements that is to add something outside of the existing rules about when absentee ballots may or may not be used. Is that what you're asking? I'm, I'm that we could frame that as a question and you're let's, correct. Let's frame it as a question. Okay. Just for my sake. Okay. okay that's so that's fair. that's fair. Nathalie, does, does that question, do you understand the question? Yes. And um, what I'm doing, what, th these are actually uh, textually parts of the bylaws. So it's not necessarily a question. I copy paste. I'm just the bylaws. trying to get us clear. Sure. So the we bylaws can... say what about when absentee votes may be used? This is a bylaws article 4A. Votes can be taken at convention. This is art this is one article for A4. Okay. And this is article A3. Okay. So that's the only thing. I'm just just copy pasting bylaws. I'm not changing, doing anything. I understand that Chuck has a concern because I highlighted one thing, but what I can do is also highlight your contention here. So I'm going to take the question mark. Wait, wait, wait. Can I? Okay, wait a second here. Can I just make an observation? What we're reading right now, Tasha, is Natalie's representation. I don't care about A3 at this point. Well, that's what you're. I, this is what your I care about. What I care about is that we're going to have a discussion. So basically, the the con. So Tasha, I invite you to to push into this dispute about how do we interpret who gets to vote at convention for absentee and not absentee? Because the reason the SEC invalidated the vote of convention is this dispute. So basically all of this business you're reading should not be represented in our agenda. It's a bunch of words, it's gobbledygook to the most people. We simply need to go through the process of accepting whether the conventions of, Jan of the March convention, the, the, the majority said that January convention was okay. Now, what the SEC said was, no, it's not okay, because we're interpreting the rules to say so, you you disenfranchised people because you didn't follow our reading of the rules. This is where this I, is, this I hear is that there is a debate about the rules. There's so, no debate. There's an absolute violation I, of the rules going on here. I, debate is just means there are people who have disagreements. <laughs> there is clearly a debate. Um, I'm seeing Dan's hand and Justin's hand. So let's go there for a minute. I'm also seeing a giant bunch of stuff playing out in the meeting chat, which I'm going to tell you as a facilitator, I can't track. So I'm going to ask the folks who are talking about stuff in the chat to put your hands in the air so that we can all be part of the conversation because I'm, I am not going to try to track both of those things simultaneously. So Dan, keep it well, short. Well, if I if yeah. I may, though, Dan's already spoken, and also Dan is not a member of the agenda committee, so his I object to me to me he's this is an agenda committee. I'm meeting. a supporting member of the Pacific. You can Green observe, Party. but you're not a priority. So this is a meeting for the agenda committee. What happened to, to wide participation? You're not a priority. You can observe. What are you? What are you? No, I, I want to say I disagree here? with this. I I think Dan has a right to speak at this meeting. I mean, I we've always right. made these open to, to everyone. So I'm not saying he can't speak. I'm saying he's not a priority. I'm just going to try to keep conversation comments short enough that we can really actually hear everybody. And if we start hearing a lot of repetition from a bunch of people, then I will ask them to hold their comments while we collect others. So let me give Dan like one minute and then Justin, you're up. Construction is done carefully. This bylaws article A4 cannot be read liberally. It occurs in the context of other bylaws that generally say that votes taken at meetings and conventions, including conventions are taken by those present unless specified in other exemptions, such as this one. The first sentence of A4 sets forth candidates, ballot initiatives, and SCC elections as those exceptions. No text in that second sentence gives the SCC any authority or power to go outside that context. Apparently, they think that the phrase when and how means that they can decide when to liberally 
to add other eligible classes. But that so, is that is impossible to construct when when can be easily applied within those contexts. For example, Dan, if you hang have on. an SCC vote, if you have an SCC vote and that is eligible, well, when when you when you're deciding when to have it, you can send out the ballots before the convention. You can send them out during. When can mean, well, when do you want the ballots back? You want them back before it's adjourned, et cetera, et cetera. There's nothing in there, no text in there that says that they can go outside the context set in the first sentence. I hear you. Thank you. Um, Justin. I think some important context for you to understand as an outsider trying to grasp our bylaws is there is a bylaw that empowers the SEC to interpret the bylaws. So while go it, please, Justin. You're on the SEC, Chuck, by the way, and you were there for the vote. Oh, so oh, you're talking about the conventions manual. Don't conflate conventions manual with a no, bylaw. I'm talking about any bylaw whatsoever. And so, and in the SEC, and I've laid I, I can give you the exact language and quote the bylaws. I've done this ad nauseum at this point. I'll do it. I'll put it Say on. It. Say it. But so a couple key points. One, the SEC by the bylaws is empowered to interpret the bylaws. And two, the SEC is empowered to establish absentee voting policy. So, and then here's my sidebar. This is more of an, that's pretty much fact. When and how sidebar, which is maybe text. a little opinion, is that resolutions are not explicitly defined in the bylaws. So that leaves it up to interpretation. So in my opinion, Chuck has purposefully sought out this resolution category that isn't explicitly defined as a sort of loophole to get his agenda some sort of recognition. So <clears throat> I'll stop there. Great, great. Seth, we haven't heard from you yet. Yeah, I wanted to agree with uh, what Justin was saying. Um, the the thing is, the SEC has always had the ability to make binding interpretations of state organizational documents, as uh, I think this is Natalie um, is highlighting uh, in the bylaws. And we also have wrong. we also have four, we also have four pillars that uh, have grassroots democracy as one of them. And the, the context of our bylaws should be interpreted with our pillars in mind. And because the the bylaw, not in the constitution here, but the bylaw in section four that we've been linking to earlier uh, is two separate sentences. Those are actually two separate sentences. They're not, it's not conditional. Uh, so you have to interpret the sentence that's underlined there in article A4 as a, as a sentence without, normally the rules of construction require that you not insert or remove words. And Corey, you the SEC would be... Seth. You can't consider anything in isolation. Please don't talking. interrupt him. Yeah, don't, Dan, interrupt. Dan, don't interrupt. Put your hand up. Put your hand up, Dan. Right. So you're in the you're in the queue, but hang on. Seth, I'm finish gonna, your I'm thought, gonna, please. Yeah. I'm going to do that too. So, so the... Uh, so as I was saying, the uh, you're not allowed to insert and remove words, and it would be inserting or removing words to add some sort of uh, subordination of the second sentence to the first. To me, they look like they're standalone statements that can be interpreted individually and also together. But we all, if we're going to interpret them together, we need to interpret them with the the principles of the party, which is grassroots democracy so that's thank you seth yes i have nathalie and dan and i'm going to encourage people to keep your comments short so we can so we are not planning. going to agree we have to agree right. to disagree at the convention we can put both both positions and let the convention decide that's what we need to do that's what the steering committee is charged with the draft agenda so we're going to vote tonight. So we don't need to go around and around and around trying to agree on something that we disagree on. So right. the Lane Liberty Greens has the opportunity here to give me text that we're going to put on the draft agenda that's going to go to the convention. 
And we're going to vote as to whether we're going to approach this this manner. Because to me, it seems the most sensible manner. We're going to limit debate to a certain amount of time. And we're going to go with it, regardless of the results. We're not going to decide this. We're not going to agree, which is why we need to focus on new bylaws, where we can all work on it and agree on the new bylaws. And um, I'm going to leave it like that. Alan Zandel also doesn't agree that the lane liberty is a correct interpretation. And I'm sure that many other people don't either. But I'm going to let the convention decide. Yes. So right now, let's not try to rehash what we have rehashed many times. Do you yes. provide me, me the text that you want? We're going to vote as to how we're going to propose this to the convention for a vote of the convention. And the steering committee is going to be able to vote tonight as to whether this is going to weigh that it's going to appear on the draft agenda. So, Dan, I've got your hand and I'll be calling you in just a moment. So I think as I understand it, all of you would agree that this decision about which is the right interpretation is not one that should be made by the steering committee, correct? So anybody who disagrees and thinks the steering committee should make that decision? The steering committee can is charged is with uh, to make the interpretations on the bylaws. Right, but or that's not what you're proposing, Nathalie. What no. I heard you propose is yeah. we're not going to give this to the steering committee to decide. We're going to, the steering committee's job is to create correct. an agenda and allow the convention to make the decision. Is that a correct? Yes, correct. Correct. Okay. Sorry, I mean, so I'm that's sorry. the proposal on the floor. So before we go to hands up, I want to do a quick straw poll, right? So, which is hard to do because we're not on a mural. <laughs> this is part of the challenge, right? Let me because see if I can send a yeah. poll. Well, no. Don't, we don't need polling right now. Just well, keep talking, Tasha. Talk us through this. So the proposal, well, I'm trying to, but I can't figure out how to get you to give me hands up when you have your hands up for other reasons. Okay, right? This is part of hand. the challenge. Just everyone drop your hand for the exercise yeah. of listening to Tasha. Can I clarify so, first? Um, Natalie, would you unshare the screen for a minute so we can all see everybody's... Sorry, yes. Right. Point so if people would undrop your hands for a moment. Wait, wait, Dan's talking. Dan, what do you say? Point of order from point Dan. Of information. Uh, is this vote, uh, is this proposal to have the convention vote on admiralty voting by a roll call or show of hands or other vote of those present? Or is it a vote to be including uh, absentee voters? That's a good question. Nathalie, do you have an answer from your perspective on that question? I am going to suggest that we do it for at the convention with a poll. Uh, so just the people present at the convention using yeah. a Zoom poll. I mean, we could do it that way. Alternatively, we could also do an OPA vote, which in my perspective would be more democratic because people would have the opportunity to read the resolutions from January and March. And maybe they would find that those resolutions are amazing and vote to approve the January uh in march uh resolutions right but maybe they they think that yeah well you know not receiving absentee voting was not really very cool and they'll vote against so i think that we need we owe it to the people who are coming to the convention because we are going to have a large convention to be able to read what really is a matter i'm not i'm but, not here uh, well just to clarify please your proposed uh, th this is not this kind of seems like it's shifting around a bit. You're proposing that the convention uh, decide whether it is going to take absentee votes. I'm asking whether you are proposing that this be done by those present at convention or that this be a decision made by those present along with absentee voters. I'm, no, fine, what with I'm, what I'm, I'm offering, not fine with the latter. What I'm, what I'm offering, Dan, is not about absentee voting. What I'm offering is to make a to vote for the people present at the convention, present at the convention, whether to approve the minutes or not approve the minutes, but they need to be able to read those things. So I suggest that the people at the convention vote, but I suggest that they vote through OPA vote because like this, they'll have the opportunity to read the fantastic resolutions. Okay, if this could be written down, please, so that we know what we're voting on. May I speak, please? So we're gonna- Hang we're on gonna... one second. Tasha, would you Pause. mind recapping what we're voting Pause. on? And I think that Seth has a hand. Yes, I know. Let's Pause. go to Seth. 
and then I'll recap to be clear on what I understand. I think Natasha is going to recap for us. I will recap. That's part of my job. So my understanding is that the proposal on the floor at this moment from Natalie is that the people present at the convention, so not people who are not present, but people who are present at the convention, be asked to consider this question about whether to adopt the January and March minutes now or to go to the SCC proposal, which is to take it through a consensus process and be brought up again at the January convention under the new bylaws. And where so that some of the ambiguity has been resolved or inside the bylaws, which is very apparent at the moment, right? And that the that, that vote be done using OPA vote, which means it will not happen instantly at the convention. It will, the results will come to us later after the convention so that people have time to read and digest stuff, but it will still be limited to the people who are present. Is that correct, Natalie? That's the proposal? That is what I'm suggesting, yes. Okay. So that's what I understand the proposal is. Seth, your hand is up. Yeah, I, I just wanted to note that it seems odd to to do that proposal because the steering committee has already voted and decided on the issue and the convention would just be making an advisory resolution that doesn't actually mean anything legally. And so because the constitution makes it clear that interpreting the bylaws is an SEC role. Now, if we're agreeing to accept minutes, that's the purview of the convention. So um, I don't know why minutes is a big problem here. The minutes could say uh, that the people attending the convention wanted to decide a certain way, but they excluded the absentee voters. If we accepted the minutes like that, then it's fine, right? That's what happened. That's so, not what the minutes are... say, Seth. They forced me to remove the steering committee reports from the January meetings minutes we 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 for, we put thumb screws on her it was a and she was, it was excruciating and she she finally complied but thank god that it entered into the record correctly yes i'm so glad we have the video so so okay so i want to be clear right so seth what i'm hearing you say is that if the minutes are simply adopted yeah as they are now my understanding is that that the way they are now does not clearly indicate that people were not that the absentee folks were not allowed to vote. Is that correct, Chuck? But the January minutes, I was forced in the March convention to oh. take it out, take out. But, the Natalie, hang on, hang yeah. on. Chuck, do the January minutes say clearly that a vote was taken to have only the people at the convention vote? and not the absentee voters. It doesn't explicitly lay that out, but what, what the, the, the January convention minutes yeah. they, represent they it that it was a, a an honest event. And then the March convention affirmed that the January convention was an honest event. Subsequent to the March convention, and the, the March SP minutes the SEC the, said, entered the SEC report the SEC, from the January. The SEC represented that the March convention was rejected on the same grounds that it was rejected. Okay. I, I hear convention. you. Okay, so just for my clarity, there is nothing in the January minutes that indicates that a vote was taken during the January meeting to make these decisions only with the people in the room and not with the absentee voters. Correct? It, it, Correct. No, it Correct. doesn't. It doesn't go that granular. Right. Fine. It, it okay. Didn't need to, it so, didn't so my, I hear my you, Chuck. I'm just to, trying to get clear about the facts. Yeah, right? that's, so, a fair, that's a fair fact. Okay. So my so, proposal is to modify that to have the January and the March conventions have noted and who was participating in those minutes. Then we just approve those minutes because we're documenting facts rather than value statements. Was it honest or not? We don't need to go into that. Just document the facts of what happened. And then the minutes are dealt with. Is that something so, everyone so, could agree to? So, yeah. So, so Tasha, basically, getting the convention going 
should be a perfunctory event. In other words, do we accept the minutes Doc, from- I our, understand what you're- wait, 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 Let me just pause. finish with this. I get it. I hear you. I understand that you think this is a simple process. It's very clear that it's not that it's highly charged, that there's a lot of disagreements here and that that's not what's gonna happen. I can't plan for a facilitation if this whole discussion is gonna happen again and again and again at the convention, which is what's gonna happen if we don't create an agenda where there's enough agreement that we can move forward. My job is to try to help you figure out an agenda that will actually work. And I see absolutely no evidence absolutely no evidence that that will happen. You're talking, but you've been muted, so nobody can hear you. Hang on a second. I will give you a chance to respond, <laughs> but I am not going to let you just keep trying to railroad this. I'm not I'm, railroading. I am, <laughs> I am following. This is what's going to, there's a moment in our convention where it, where the SEC. We've all loses. heard it, Chuck. Give it up. We need to go to a vote. We're not going to agree. Hey, Period. Well, we're no, not going to agree. Wait. The steering committee can take a vote on the draft agenda, okay. and that's what we're going to do. Hey, then I'll, Period. Can, let me just. I don't uh, have until ten o'clock tonight. I, I don't have either. Kids at home. I'm not going to wait for you to like come around to it. We're not going to. We're not commandeering anything. Sorry. Here's the fact of process. The oh. convention will talk about. I know, Chuck. We don't agree. Give it up. We don't agree. We you don't want to agree. do we this. You we want to have this con convention. Sorry. You want to have this conversation in 10 minutes. And I'm suggesting we need to allow an, an hour for it, Tasha. You see how grappling oh. we are with this. We need 10 minutes, five minutes each, and then make a decision then, for. Then let's make it 10 half minutes the each. People, 10 half minutes the each. people. Half there. of the people Ten that are coming each. to this, half of the people Pause. that are coming Pause. to this convention know nothing about this dispute. Pause. So this is a this is becoming a, a almost a so, joke. So of, it appears to me. Process. It appears to me that if in fact you all want the adoption of the minutes to be a simple thing, that the easiest path for that that I can see is for you all to amend the minutes to clearly indicate the vote that was taken about who got to vote. Then the minutes are a factual representation of what happened and you can have them adopted in five minutes. And then we can go on to talk about the bylaws, which seems like a good plan. Great, so I just got a thumbs up from Chuck. So what would the process be for amending the minutes to those two meetings to clearly indicate that a decision got made at each convention to limit voting to the people who are present. Thank you. What's the process for that? We just need to add the link to the steering committee report to the January minutes. Can we agree as an SEC meeting on that right now here? That's what I'm proposing. I agree with that proposal, Tasha. I think that's a great idea. It would clear up a lot. That's what you guys who would who you remove. Who's a block on what Tasha just proposed? And say why, please. Though I'm not on the SCC, I would be a block. The minutes are the problem. You the would be, but you're not. So can we so? just, Let's. you can just hold it for a second. Okay. Let the SCC talk. Dan's <laughs> so, making a valid point though. Um, the minute would, the minutes would be approved by the convention, not the SCC, because there's the minutes not, of the it's convention. It's not just that, Seth. Right, that, I'm not asking, that. I'm not asking the SCC to approve the minutes. I'm asking the SCC to, in this moment, simplify your agenda. We're talking about how to how to make an agenda that will work. That's my job is to help you make an agenda that will work. If we create, if we amend the minutes of the March, uh, the, the January. January and March conventions to clearly show that a vote happened in those, in both of those conventions to limit voting to the people who were physically present. Tasha, may I just say what I have to say? Hang on for a second, Dan. I want to finish this proposal. The so we clearly amend the minutes so that that the language is there that the decision got made by the convention to limit voting to the people who are physically present during the convention, and not to send absentee votes to people who had requested them. Right, and not to send absentee ballots to people who had requested them. If that language goes in, 
then I think we can simplify this whole business about minutes and just ask people to approve the minutes or not. Well, if if that- I believe my hand was up, Chuck. Let's go to Dan. I, Dan I believe my hand was up. And so I think we've given enough time, time to- and I'm sick of you trying to silence me. I think we've given enough time to your derailing a meeting that is not your meeting, quite frankly. Okay. You're not on the agenda Dan committee. To We're here to pause. set- Pause. If, if we don't want to spend time arguing about this. Dan, you've got 20 seconds. Yes. Uh, the language in the SEC report was very biased. It accused the vote of being unfair. A non-biased language would simply indicate that the vote was taken among I, those present. I don't see an objection. I didn't say add the SCC report. You, you said I something said about add language. Limit, limited to those present. We don't normally do that because that's our precedent. We have very little history of using absentee. So just call it a vote of those present. Yes. I think it needs, if, if it's going to work for everybody in the room, I think it needs to include language that says there were people who requested absentee ballots and who were not allowed to vote. So that's the proposal on the floor. Um, I see Suzia and Justin, you had your hand up. Do you still want to speak? I would like to speak, yes. Okay. Okay. So I think you're next because I saw your hand up first. Please limit yourself to 20 or 30 seconds. And then we'll go to Suzia. I'll do my I'll do my best. <clears throat> so uh I'm trying to remember where I was because I well, one. I would just like to reiterate that this is an agenda committee meeting for the purpose of establishing an agenda. And the SEC is the agenda committee as put forth in the bylaws. So while I welcome others' input, it is not binding according to our, by our bylaws. We have a job to do to publish an agenda and thank you for helping us with it. But, you know, the the dissension of the minority is not important regardless <clears throat> I, i'll just leave it at that i apologize i had a, a point to make but it was derailed well write it in the Susia? chat we'll come back to you amy i'd like to clarify on this vote that we're about to take mm -hmm. you are asking us to vote on whether we allowed absentee voting in the January and and the second and the, what was that the March convention is that what? You, but if it didn't happen that way, if we did allow absentee voting, then you couldn't vote yes, could you? Because I I thought I remembered we did allow absentee voting. So no, you didn't. We allowed it for SEC in January. So I remember my point, if I may, really quickly, sorry, Susia, if you were done. So yes, as, as, it, as, as it pertains to the minutes, I think Seth's distinction is, is a good one. Like if we can just agree to state what the facts were, this isn't, this is approving the minutes would just be an approving of what happened. It's not an endorsement of what happened per se. So if we can just agree to accurately reflect what happened there and that the membership and the or the convention overrode the SEC on the absentee balloting policy, then I can go move forward. So pause hey. there. I'm just gonna wow. hold it. Hold, hold. I put a pro I put proposal language in the chat. Would everybody look at the proposal language in the chat, please? Um, I'm going to read it. Amend the January and March 2023 minutes. So my argument, right? Okay, I'll read it. Uh, minutes to say clearly that each convention voted to limit voting to people physically at the convention and therefore not allowing the folks who requested absentee. I have no problem with that. I have right. absolutely no problem with that. And Dan, I'll tell you why I have no problem with it because it's irrelevant whether someone wanted absentee. Our, our rules are very, very clear. Uh, we'll debate the rules later. Was permitted and, and now let me just tell you something. If the SEC goes along with this, then there's no argument that the, that the Green Liberty Caucus did not get a majority vote in five of the six resolutions. That, and, and I will use that. Now, I, what I offered mm -hmm. to Natalie, because Natalie went, you know, quite upset over this. If I'm, I'm happy to subject the Green Liberty resolutions to the 
um, the larger group uh, consensus process. I offered that, and I'm willing to sub to to use that process to subject green liberty to the broader you know subjectivity of the party. But what I sought, and just for Tosh, and I'll shut up with this. I went as a as an activist in the party of uh, the leader of the Green Liberty Caucus Oregon chapter, and we're a formal chapter. And I sought the blessing of the chap of the convention. I said, "Here's some resolutions, and there's a range of them. There's six of them. There was seven. And I can you can you make it to the points, please? Well, my my point is, a majority in five of the six cases gave me, Chuck, um, as a leader of uh, Green Liberty, as a much blessing. As you do. And yep. the SEC so, is trying to take it away. I, I hear, and, I hear and, the and opinion. They, I just want us to yes on this. Okay. Then I'm going to enough. We're just going to stick to the proposal right now. Well, Seth, do you have a comment on the proposal? Uh, you're muted. Let's unmute Seth so he can talk. I got it. Um, got it. Okay. I was just going to note that we could modify the draft minutes and put in the, the note that you suggest, and then the agenda item in the in the like the actual agenda item itself would just link to the new draft minutes that have mm -hmm. that modification. Then we agree to accept both of those draft minutes because right. I don't think the um, I don't think we've actually approved previous minutes really. Like, right. That's that's so we don't we need to just, we don't need to amend. We just link to these draft minutes. Right. And so then this so convention we, agrees to accept both of them. Great. Uh, I need so, to correct that. I need to correct that, Tasha. Very quickly. You've got 10 the, seconds. The first order of business in the March convention was to correct the January minutes, which alleged that the vote was forced. So we cleaned up at the March no, convention um, that the stop, Natalie, that the January convention okay. was not a forced event. It was authentic and and valid. Okay. okay, I'll take a friendly I'll take that as a friendly amendment and I'll say we will the proposal is to amend the January minutes and to accept the March minutes with the draft. So we would amend the January minutes, but since March hasn't been adopted yet, we would accept um the new draft minutes and that it would that would just be what it says we don't need to put a link to the sec report at the minute section because we're just um we're just making what everyone agrees here would be factual corrections to those minutes and then the sec report can be in the bylaw minute uh, of or the proposed uh, agenda item for that I think that resolves everyone's concerns. Wait, wait a second. I just, I'll interject again. There's nothing wrong with the current March minutes to the March convention. The March minutes to the March convention represent that a majority endorsed the January convention. What came subsequent to the March convention is that the SEC rejected the March convention. So when we endorse the March minutes, and accept them as the record, we are nullifying the SEC rejection of the March minutes. I want to be okay, absolutely clear about this. That's not what I'm proposing. That's well, not that's what's what going needs to happen. To happen <laughs> that, that, that's Talks. going to be that's going to be the bylaw um minute proposal. That's no, gonna be discussed no, later. Oh no, no. So pause. I really want us to see if we can separate the minutes thing from the rest of this hoo-ha, right? Because if we spend the entire friggin' meeting talking about the minutes, we are gonna crash and burn. So I want to be clear, it seems like there may be two different procedural things happening here. I'm not quite sure what the right language is, but the basic idea here is that you would add lang you would add language to both the January and March meetings, because my understanding is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the March meeting also disallowed absentee ballots for all of what was happening. Correct. Right. So all we're suggesting is that we're going to add language to both of those meeting minutes that says that clearly. That's all. That's all we're asking us to do at this point. And then those minutes would be submitted for approval at the beginning of this meeting. Yes. So Right. We're going to stop right there. 
I need who's I need to know I won't need the steering committee, the people who can actually vote on this, please. To this is a straw poll, not a final vote. I need to see where we are. So if you would give me a thumbs up if you are on the steering committee and you appreciate and, and that is a proposal that you would support. I see a thumbs up from Connor, from Justin, from Bob. I, I, I um, need Natalie. I need to hear from I need to counsel with Dan to know what to vote. Put my thumb. I need to hear. From, can we share? Can we give Dan another 40 seconds, please? Be your own man. No, I Dan's my counselor, my consigliore. You're his little minion. Uh, you You've know, heard enough no from name Dan. Hey, no We've need heard it. enough. No name it. calling. Pause. No name calling. Sorry. You're right. Sorry. So I retract. Um, Dan, you've got 30 seconds. Why not okay. just let Chuck abstain? To 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 re, to make sure there's no bias in these minutes, why don't you scroll up to what I wrote in the chat? Let's just start adding notations about whether the vote was taken among those present or taken among those present and absentee in the January minutes or even for all the votes. And the reader can can read the minutes mm -hmm. and make whatever judgment based on what it means to them. What 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 time for what time did you post in the chat, Dan? Is that like a, the eight twenty nine? A couple minutes ago. Okay. Yeah, it's like the fifth one up. I it's object in that we clearly need to say that absentee votes were disallowed. That you voted not to send votes to absentee votes. That is to people who are not present and requested it. That is the key. Can I? So if you, if you agree, please. if you Wait. believe so strongly, stop, 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 sorry. stop. The proposal is to add language that says clearly that the that each of those conventions voted to limit voting to the people present and to not allow voting by folks who had requested absentee ballots. Factual statement. That's Factual statement. What we care about, not what we think of it, none of those things. But Tasha's prejudice statement. It's a, is it a fact or it not? Is. It's it, prejudiced. It's, it implies is it, that there is was it precedent a fact? for using yes absentee. Or not. It's not a it's fact. Not. It's a prejudiced fact. Okay, you did not vote not to send absentee ballots, or did you vote not to send absentee ballots? It was. I a voted to follow ballot. our rules. Yes, that, and that, so you voted not to send absentee ballots. Fact. Even Justin was part of that consensus. Listen, do you did you do it or not? I mean, you know, you cannot do both things at the same time. Yeah, there's no did it, stand by but, your decision. There's no precedent. You will allow there's it no in precedent for it. There was no one with very few people, except the people you told there would be absentee, had any notion that absentee would ever be expected to be used for a vote like that. Sweetie, we did publicize it. This is what this no, I, okay. guys. I'm so, going to jump in uh, like a, I haven't said anything, but I'm going to tell you that I was present on those on those convention, and I remember that a vote was taken to only allow people present to vote that's it no, I would that's say it. don't be don't be ashamed of that. the fact the fa that's the fact just and stop there don't it. add anything further just no, we, and those then, present got to participate and vote and that's all you don't need and to there was a discussion about this sending absentee, absentee bill, ballots no, and you rubbish. decided not to i mean be upfront with your decision why are you hiding be proud I'm not of hiding you about anything for. Let's give this back to Tasha, please. Okay, so look, I'm having read the bylaws, there are clearly procedures for, there's there are clearly, there is clearly precedent for using absentee ballots. For three categories. That's not how I read the bylaws. That's how they read, that's what they say. I well, hear you, but Chuck, you're that, that's how you read them. It doesn't matter what Tasha or Chuck thinks, it matters what the SEC thinks. And the SEC, SEC voted may not the SEC is in charge. The SEC dictates to the whole party. This is ridiculous. The SEC is okay, in power. We're elected to interpret the counsel? bylaws. Wait, just okay. Chuck, did you counsel with Dan on how you're going to vote on adding that language into the minutes? I don't what? want prejudiced language. Okay, you vote so against. I hear you, but Fine. that's the proposal. That's and the you proposal. can vote yes you or vote no. Against. Perfect. The, it's Pause. Clear. The proposal is to add language that clearly states that you made a decision 
to make the all of the votes in those things only with the people who are present and not for folks with absentee ballots. Fact. Okay. Fact. I, That's the proposal. I can, you I can, can accept that. I great. will accept that. Great. I, so, I, 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 but we're I would gonna take a vote. Toss it, toss Pause. It. Wait, no, let me just wordsmith. Absentee voting was absentee voting was not provided to those not present. The vote followed convention rules. We're not going to say the vote followed convention rules. There is no consensus about that. No. We're going to if we're going to amend this, we're going to amend it with the simple fact that a vote was taken to limit the voting on all of those proposals to the folks who are physically present. Period. And, period. And that they, what a period. That, no, and that absentee validating was not allowed. Okay. It's I'll a accept. fact. I will accept that we did not. Great. Thank you. Perfect. Was not Stop. Perfect. Stop. 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 Right there. So that language, the vote we're going to take right this minute is to vote on adding that language to both sets of minutes, the January and the March 2023 minutes. Can we put it in the chat? It's already in the chat. So we've wasted 10 minutes. It's what well, Tasha sent earlier. Who who has it? Dan, can you describe Eight. it? Just it's it's a short thing. It's right here. Okay. To say clearly that each convention voted to limit voting to people physically at the convention on the Zoom and therefore not allowing the folks who requested absentee ballots to vote. All right. If that's how you want to frame it. It should right. say present. So we're going to vote on that. Pause. We're going to vote on that. If you are on the SCC, I need your yes or no now. Well, yes. I mean, the... With the caveat, the technicality, physically, maybe it should be tweaked, but yes. Sure. We could say present on the present at the convention. Yes. And there's a lot of absentee votes to be sent. Oh, yeah. forget now. That's forget what's here. Thanks. That's what's here, sweetie. Luke, read, read, read. That's what's here. That's the what language, that's what's... the language is simple. Keep it simple, Natalie. Yeah, okay. Vote against. Everybody else is going to vote for it. Susie, I'm going to let, allow Susie to vote. not allowing folks who requested absentee ballots to vote. There's, I've removed the word physically. Because it was by, just say by Zoom. It, 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 we're, we're basically running our conventions by Zoom now. I cannot find a down, a down thumb. There okay. is no down thumb. That's negative. So there is a, yeah. Right, so but I don't support forget. this. So I cannot, I cannot vote yes because Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, you went show. Okay. So Susie is a no. Wait a second. Why is Susie a no? I would yes. typically be a stand aside, honestly. Okay. I don't want to get in the way of this moving forward, but I remember it differently. And that would be lying for me to say that. What, what do you remember, Susie? But we're not going there right now. We're going to vote. I'm fine with a stand aside. It's, great. Susie's going to stand aside. Um. I'm going to do a, a roll call because we obviously don't have the tech. So if you are, if I call your name and you are not a steering committee member, just tell me that. Justin. Yes, let's do this. Chuck. I, I'm a yes, as long as it's clear that this means these, these conventions are affirmed by this. Oh, my goodness. It, it means and, that and the so meeting, it no, means no, no, that wait, the wait, meeting wait, minutes wait, 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 wait can be approved. It means For the meeting God's minutes sake. can be approved as wait, is. That's all. That's what it means. Okay. That could be a Okay. Nathalie. Yes. Felipe. Yes. Susia, you're a stand aside. Yes. Correct. Okay. Hi. Dan is not on the steering committee, correct? That's correct. Amy. Not on the SEC. He's not on. Okay. Seth. He's not. I'm I'm just secretary, not on the okay. SEC. Connor. Uh, yes. Bobby. Connor. Uh, Connor speaking. Uh, I, I'm in favor. Okay. And then I have a phone number here. I don't know who that is. She's not Can you identify yourself? And... They're not in the SEC. Hi, it's Sabrina. Okay, great. 
Bob, so, Bob would so be. Can I just be clear to everyone as an SEC member, as in a member of the Green Liberty Caucus Oregon chapter, I am interpreting the acceptance of the minutes from the March convention as the authorization of two conventions to endorse five of the six Green Liberty resolutions. That's my interpretation of this. If there's an objection to what I'm saying right now, then I need to hear it. And that needs to be cleared up at convention so that we have this understanding because subsequent to this, these minutes being accepted, the SEC rejects what we are accepting. So the SEC rejection needs to be nullified by this acceptance of the minutes. And I'm gonna, I'm whether it's stated or not, I'm gonna interpret this that way. Does anybody object to my interpretation? Apparently Justin does. The blessing. Well, okay. I think the majority of the SEC already objects to that interpretation because we've already voted to not recognize the results of that improperly run convention. But if you accept the minutes, you're nullifying your own rejection. You're just recognizing facts. You're what happened. Your minutes are just a, ref a statement of facts. Tasha, correct me if I'm wrong. It depends on what your governance documents say about minutes, but that's how I would right. read it. But the minutes also should, in, you know, I mean, the whole thing should also I'm just reflect telling the you fact all... that, is, that we met and we realized that that vote was taken out of order and not in compliance with the bylaws. Okay. So but, I but presume that, that there's a there's a set of SCC minutes that would reflect that, correct? Yes. Okay. So those those are standing, those exist. Okay. I so report. I'm going to ask I I just need a clarification that the SCC accepts that this accepting of the minutes in March of the March convention nullifies their rejection of the March convention. No, I, I don't think that's what that means to well, the rest of the I'm going to interpret it this way. And if we want to resolve this dispute over this, we need to clear this up because I need to have, because part of what I'm asking for in this accepting of the minutes and if, because we haven't even gotten to accepting of the agenda yet. We were just talking about. Oh my goodness, the Chuck. You know Natalie, stop. This is serious. And. I think she's clear it's serious, Chuck. Okay. I, I'm out. Chuck, uh, I'm okay. So, speaking as the person you have asked to be your thought partner in this agenda development process, I am noting that it is now quarter to nine, that you said you wanted to be done with drafting an agenda at nine. We have done one thing and we have not finalized it yet. So, I would like you to consider the possibility that you cannot resolve this problem in this meeting and that the, the path to getting the minutes accepted, if what you really want is to be able to get that done, we've created that path. What that means about the decisions that got made and the legitimacy of them is a question about whether in fact, there is a challenge to whether those, the decisions that you made in those conventions about who got to vote was legitimate. And it seems to me that the steering committee has called that into question. That's not about the minutes. That's about the way that got run, right? And part of the challenge that all of you are having at this point is a conflation of those two things. So, I would love to see you use this proposal we just created to approve the minutes so that that part is friggin' done. That little piece of procedure can happen. Everybody knows that's there. It seems like there's another conversation that needs to happen about what that means in terms of the decisions that got made in those conventions. And the proposal that I heard from I mean, Chuck, I heard you say earlier that you were more than willing to submit those ideas, those proposals to the larger membership to discuss. And the proposal that I saw earlier up on this convention draft agenda was in fact to submit those to a longer consensus building process and have them voted on again in January. 
yes. having through yes. a larger process. Tasha, I, I accept what you said, but I want the the blessing that Green Liberty Caucus got from two conventions to be recognized. And if and if we vote yes for this, I'm going to accept. That Excuse me, if that's what a yes vote represents, then I vote no. Okay, thanks, thanks, Bob, for your honesty. So, I think what we had agreed on was a factual record of what happened in the meeting, and. I don't think you're going to get consensus on that larger thing in this meeting. And we could spend another 45 minutes going around on it, but frankly, I don't think any of us wants to be here until 10. So I am going to suggest that what we do in this situation in order to create a functional meeting agenda is to separate those two things out, approve the minutes with that with those additions, and then propose that the resolutions that came out of those meetings go through this larger consensus building process with the larger membership and be talked about again at the January convention, which Chuck, I think you said you were okay with. Perfect. I would accept that, but I, I want a clear representation, but I want this, this embrace, this acceptance of the minutes to, to Chuck, be a nullification. You're not going to get it. You're not, not going to get it. It's a nullification. You don't, you don't, I, you're I, not going to get consensus. I don't know why you're on the steering committee. I mean, I don't understand. You understand what we're doing. Are you okay with sending your resolutions to the large group consensus process for a vote in January? Yes. Perfect. Then let's just. Resolve. Everything resolved. We'll just send us. Proposal. No, Do no, 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 Natalie. We're going to recognize that the January and March conventions were valid. No, we're gonna uh, we're going to accept the minutes. That's what and, you've got and, consensus and on. When you accept the minutes, you validate the the conventions. You we, can. What we are not validating the conventions because we have genuine concerns that it was an undemocratic vote, and there's no agreement of that. So, because what you want is really to pass the resolutions, let's work on that. Let's not like focus on what we disagree. Let's put those resolutions through the large group consensus. We'll just put it out there. We'll explain what happened and then people can participate. And at the January convention, we'll just have new bylaws, hopefully, so that people can really participate. And then we'll put those resolutions for a vote at the January convention, because since, you firmly believe that these resolutions are have a lot of support and will write them so they have a lot of support, if, if they have a lot of support, then they will be approved with the blessing of a lot of people and a lot of visibility. I want to, I want both, if we approve these minutes, if we approve the March minutes and Should recognize the, <laughs> no, stop Natalie, this oh, validates the the business of convention chuck, the convention rules i don't understand what's going on I simply, chuck i i oh. hear what you want and i think that you are not going to get that vote in this so let's check it right okay we're just going to check it so again natalie would you stop sharing screen so that we can see everybody um so for sec committee members um i'm also uh, i'm really going to try to notice like in the chat there's a lot of name calling happening right now and i'm it's not helpful can yeah. we just stop just stop stop it right. yeah um so sec members the i object to the assertion that the chat is name calling just because someone calls it name calling doesn't make it name calling assertions of fact are not name calling Yes, but some of what I'm seeing in here is name calling. Yes. I'm not saying that everything that's going up in the chat is name calling. I'm asking people to like pull back the personal stuff and just stay focused with me. Thank you. Okay. So Chuck's request of the SEC at this moment is that you all come to a agreement, a consensus or a majority vote that what adopting the minutes means is that all of the decisions that were made in those conventions are legitimate. So I need to see thumbs up or thumbs down or a, or a verbal from each person on the steering committee. I see okay. Natalie's thumbs down. 
Bob? Bob? I think I heard I think I heard Bob say that if that's what it meant, he was a no. Yeah, I'd be thumbs down. Yeah, thumbs down. Okay. Chuck isn't thumbs up. Felipe? Down. Down. Let's move on, please. I, let's just get through the vote. Connor, you are on the committee. Uh, yeah, I, I don't approve validating that stuff. Uh, I don't want them uh, okay, connected. So thumbs down. Who else? I'm losing track. Justin, are you on the committee? Yeah, that's a no. And I think we've already ruled on this, quite frankly. So, so, so Tasha, this question needs to be resolved by a direct vote of the participants at convention. Oh, my goodness, Chuck, you don't understand what we're trying to do, really. Natalie, I understand exactly no, what you're you trying to do. You don't. This I'm is sorry. our rule. Oh. I'm sorry. Do That's you right. want to have the resolution? You, this is perfunctory. We take it to convention. N Ta Tasha, all you would do is process this conversation. I object to limiting it. I to process this conversation, Chuck, and I don't think we're going to see any progress as long so, as you're involved. So, so it's the business of convention to do the business, the party of the business. The SEC is out of line. Yes. We need we, the convention. We have a fundamental disagreement about that. We have a oh. fundamental disagreement about it. And frankly, when I read your bylaws, I see a lot of blurriness about it. There's no blurriness on this. I'm sorry. I, I understand that that's your opinion. I don't think it's everybody else's opinion. And this is a democratic process. You, you haven't met everybody. One person's else, opinion Tasha. does not make or break the thing. It's it's a directly democratic process at convention. So the convention is the heart of our party, Tasha. This I understand. Is, so we and need. So we're going to go to September. The first order of business is going to be to accept the minutes. Yes, and as I'm going to say. Let's accept the minutes as they are. And I'm going to say, recognize that when we accept these minutes, we're nullifying the SEC decision that rejected the March convention. And what will happen and at I'm that gonna, moment. That's going to be the first order of business okay. because I'm going to raise my hand and, and I'm going to ask to be recognized. And, and, and I expect you will recognize me. And then we will talk about it. If and, all we want to allow is 20, 10 minutes for this, that's an injustice to the grievance that is at the bottom of this dispute. So, so we, need to, me, we need to allow can ample Can we pause time. from, pause, pause. Okay. So it seems to me that there are several issues that are getting woven together here. And as a facilitator, what I would like to do is to help you all pull them apart because I don't think that you can resolve them all in one little package. It's just not gonna happen, right? So we came up with a solution to allow the meeting minutes to be accepted by adding some language. Yes, we got to that, we got that far, right? And then we got rejected. Wait, Dan, stop interrupting me. Sorry, stop. I'll stop, okay. Thank you. <laughs> so we got that far. We also seem to have consensus on a willingness to take the, the decisions that got made in those two conventions into a larger consensus building process with the membership as a whole. That seems like a super useful step. And since there doesn't seem to be any objection to that, it seems like that can just move forward. This thing in the middle where we're arguing about who has the power to make those decisions is a bylaws question. And there is a place on the agenda to talk about bylaws. And it seems to me that the most useful thing to do is to have a conversation about what you want the bylaws to say about this moving forward. Because you can resolve the question of whether these proposals get adopted by the larger statewide party in January based on that consensus building process. And you can get the minutes passed with a simple amendment to the language. And this other thing in the middle, you can, spend, you can go round and round and round and round and round on but if you already have a place in the meeting where you're supposed to talk about what you want the bylaws to say, do it there, looking forward without getting snarled in all of this looking back business because you are not gonna come to consensus on that. There is no way that you're gonna come to consensus on it. And you've set yourselves up if you are willing to 
as I think either Dan or Chuck said in the last meeting I was sitting in, bury the hatchet, stop arguing about the past, and just focus on what should the bylaws say moving forward? What rules do we want to be operating under? And can we make them really clear so that everybody's in consensus about them? So, hand up. Go ahead, Dan. What do you have? Uh, Dan, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself, please? What happened during the past 45 minutes is that the SCC apparently, with your help, crafted a proposal, one proposal for a means of accepting the minutes. That decision belongs to the convention still. And since I was not apparently allowed to vote on it, barely even allowed to comment on it, I'm it's certainly not going to vote for that proposal at convention. I'm going to come with my own proposal. It is the uh, supporting members at convention who decide this. You've been given our bylaws, Tasha, but you don't have the experience with our president. And at this point, frankly, uh, seeing the trouble you're having parsing through, well, I'm just going to use the word, a lot of the BS that's been coming from a lot all sides, uh, it's, it's my inclination to push for going back to Lori as our facilitator. I'm not, I'm fairly well convinced that you're not capable of facilitating a green convention. I hear you. That's, I, I I'm really sorry. We're going to have to make it personal, to nothing personal against you. I'm, I'm I not believe... taking it personally and it's not my decision to make, except that, you know, this is a two-way decision, right? And if, if I, frankly, if I don't think I can be useful to you, I have no interest in spending my Sunday evening going around in circles with you, right? I, I have better things to do. So if we cannot figure out- is, I don't think your time is wasted. Let's, let's right. move on. So the proposal that I'm putting on the floor in an attempt to give you an agenda that you can actually work with is that you separate these things out, that you accept the minutes with that extra language, right? That clarifies the facts of what happened and not no like- pontificating, that you propose taking the decisions that got made in those two conventions into a larger consensus process and putting them, therefore, in front of the January 2024 convention for adoption or not, and that you take these issues that you have about who has decision-making power about what and what kind of absentee, when absentee balloting can be done and when it can't, and move it where it belongs, which is into your conversation about what you want the bylaws to say moving forward. So that you can come to consensus, hopefully, on that. Because right now, all of the arguing that you're doing about the past is just creating division after division after division after division. And I do not see any hope of you all coming to consensus on any of that. So you can spend another five or six conventions arguing about this if you want to. But if what you want is to move the party forward and build something that you can all operate inside, it seems to me that your energy is going to be better spent amending the current bylaws and clarifying them and adopting something that you can all focus and work under that clears up these issues than arguing about the past. Exactly what we want to do. Perfect. Then send anything that you want in writing so we can put it to a vote. And I just want to let you know that we have at least 40 people registered already. Uh, I, and I concur with what you said there, Tasha. Yeah, I'm, I would like to move forward. Thank you. And I apologize for any impertinence. So. Thank you very much. So here we are. I'm gonna, so Chuck, do you want to put a resolution to send your resolutions, a proposal to send your resolutions to large group consensus? I'm, I'm, I'm happy to subject the resolutions to the large group consensus. Perfect, and what we'll do is we'll schedule a set of meetings so it doesn't stay in the air. But I'm gonna, interpret yes no? this vote. Let, forget about the vote. Do you want I, that I'm, going to, I'm going to accept the blessing that that 
what we're saying right now is that Green Liberty Caucus resolutions were blessed by two conventions. They were they were blessed by the people who voted in the conventions. Yes, absolutely. And who all clear Chuck. about that. Absolutely. Right? That's that the happens. Of Great, right? Thank you very much, Chuck. Right. We're clear about that. The those those people who voted on them in the convention said yes. The minutes will reflect that. Right? They already reflect that. So okay. So I think what we can do now is we can keep a nice short piece about the minutes because we're just adopting them. And we will then have another proposal that puts the prop the propositions that were voted on in that. Um, can I can I can I ask a question, Tasha, before we finalize this? Since we're you may, Natalie. There's somebody in the waiting room. Okay. Well, just um, Connor represents that he's not. That I I would like Connor to say for the record, as an SEC member, what his interpret what he means when he accepts that he's that the the minutes to the March convention are valid. What's what, Connor? What's your interpretation of of that? You're you're saying. That you don't you don't accept that accepting the minute says conventions acknowledged that's correct the Green liberty resolutions that's as, correct let's not argue about that let's not argue about that well, no natalie no, this no, is no. so we're that's kicking the can on. that's exactly what was voted on just now that's it you, it's nine o'clock you're going around and around and around and around i'm not going you around in any circle money because our facilitator here is not only being insulted, but what's your heart time going over, 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 over. So we're going to put the proposal. I would like to hear Connor's answer. We're going to go through the consensus process. So can we hear Connor's answer, please? Connor, 30 seconds. I can't, Connor, we're not hearing you, whatever's happening over there. Just, just he may have it. stepped away. I'm not sure. Yeah, just okay. drop it because so you so say here, that this is not recognizing I, the let me, Nathalie, hang on. I think that what the what this group appears to be willing to take as accepting the minutes means is the group of people who voted in the convention made these decisions. That's what the minutes say. And the minutes will also say that there were people who had expected to be able to vote, who'd requested absentee ballots, who didn't get to vote, period, right? The legitimacy of the decisions that got made, again, like you can spend the rest of your lives arguing about the past if you want, or given that you're already decided that you're gonna submit this to a larger consensus building process and allow the January, 2024 convention to make their own decisions about it, seems like it's gonna solve whatever the problem is. Either you'll know, yes, there's a wider support for these or no, there's not, period, right? And the question is not like, was it a quote unquote legitimate decision before? The question is, what are we going to do moving forward? So you can either focus on the past, be my guest, I'm not sticking around for that, or we can focus on the future. Thank you very much, Tasha. So we have now here, you know, we can put, how much time do you think that that should take, that whole thing? Approval of the minutes, and Chuck has a pro an approval of the proposal to send the Liberty Resolutions through the large group consensus for discussion in January. So uh, let me just share what I have now at the draft a little uh, share screen. So that's there. How much time should we leave for that in your opinion, professional opinion, um, Tasha? Well, if it is a perfunctory vote on the approving the January and March minutes, the question is, are people going to need time to read it at the meeting or are they going to see those revised minutes ahead of time? Like, do we need to leave room for people to be able to read them? I think that because we're going to have Chuck's proposal to send those resolutions through the large group consensus process mm -hmm. for discussion, I'm not sure that we need to go through all of the, the detailed reading of the minutes, but that's my personal opinion. Then 
uh, are you going to submit something in writing that we, what should we expect from you in writing? Because we need to have a draft agenda that's going to work at the convention. And we don't need to have like surprises that are going to derail the convention. Like it just has now a whole meeting. Put a link to your proposed text that you just voted on tonight. And I'll send you some proposed text or a link to proposed text that you can put as an alternative proposal from me. Excuse me. I don't understand what you said. Put a link in those to your proposed text that came from Tasha or whatever you just voted on after. It's on, the, it's on the screen. That, I just added it to the draft agenda. That says that just says reflecting decisions and voting process at, at those conventions. Put a link okay. to the exact text that you voted on with all the thing. It's stuff about limiting voting. And I'll send some text that I would prefer that is a lot less uh, biased, in my opinion, than that. But it needs that to mention. Also be linked that absentee votes were denied but not my what my proposal needs to mention only what i propose okay, okay. okay. hold on hold on pa it. pause 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 so why are you want we're going to discuss the resolutions and make them go through a consensus process i don't see what your problem is you know you, you're just going to expose yourself to the fact that everybody in the, 40 people already registered we so, didn't even do outreach Pause, pause, pause. Natalie, you're taking time we don't need to take here. So let's just take this, right? So the I believe what, what Dan is asking for is the language that we're going to insert in the minutes, okay. which is in the chat. So maybe you could move that language over. Yeah, edit language. You see what I'm doing, okay? Yep. Just move that over from the chat. Who reflects the facts of the convention? And the absentee ballots. What about how about that then? Does that reflect the facts? Does that reflect the facts? Is there anything there that does not reflect does not reflect clear facts? Yes, this is unusual language that is uh, implies a basic accusation that somebody was unduly limited. We don't have a precedent of uh, by default fact? doing that. Is this a fact or it's not a fact? Yeah, I'm not happy with the text and I would like to propose better text. What's the text? Well, yeah, you probably this? don't like your action. Now, this, you uh, stop. This, stop. This is, oh my this goodness, is to be decided like by convention and you can either have, I can either, I can either submit the proposal, but here for the agenda for people to see, or we can just waste time at the convention by me submitting it there. It's say it, you. Dan, say it right now. I haven't just got it, put it on. Dan. I, I just, Let's... I just saw this. I just saw this crafted today. I, I, I'd like a little bit of time to think up better text. Do you object to anything specific about what that- Natalie, you're not going to get his, you're not going to get his buy-in. Stop. Right. So- I mean, not, this, this is, is this is to be decided at convention, and I'm going to come up with a better proposal. But well, I don't have. I have to take a little bit of time to think about it. I'll so you my understanding is that what we were trying to come to consensus on tonight was to create some language that could simply be added to the minutes, so that when people were looking at the minutes, they were looking at that new language. Except, the that that they were being asked to except that it's not a power of the SEC to unilaterally alter minutes. That has okay. to be done at convention. That's the decision. Tasha, can I, Dan, Dan, may I please, Tasha, so okay. here's the here's what's going to happen. We're going to have a formal opening of the of the of the minutes for the September convention. Uh -huh. And in the September minutes, we're going to say that the convention accepts the minutes from March and, and January that affirms the 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 vote at these conventions but people who thought they could vote by absentee weren't allowed that and I what however that language says we can I I will I I have no problem acknowledging that grievance that people who thought they could vote by absentee didn't get to 
So that's what's being allowed here. And right. I have a problem with that. And I don't think Dan fundamentally has a I mean, Dan, Dan I do. has yeah, I Dan, do actually because Dan's this is a word matter of, Dan this is, is a question of managerial managerial competence. Nobody should have been told that. Managerial in the first place. So that's that's an that's a that's a valid complaint so, from Dan Tasha. Pause, pause, pause. I understand that there is not going to be consensus about this. You can take it to a vote at the convention, that's fine. I'm asking you what you want to spend your time on for reals, right? Do you want to spend your time arguing about the past or do you want to spend your time trying to get consensus around the future? What the bylaws ought to say about empowering the SCC to shape conventions, about minutes, about all that stuff ought to be built into your governance documents. And if it's not, it needs to be because you don't want to go around this no, tree I'm, a million I'm, times okay. for the next 30 years, right? That's where your energy needs to be. Speaking as someone who's been an organizational development consultant for three decades now, groups do not succeed when they spend all their time arguing about the past. If I, you all want to build a future, you need to get focused on the future. So okay. I'm going to suggest to you that you try to find some language that you can insert in those minutes that are not a huge issue for people and that you argue in the bylaws, the revision of the bylaws section of this meeting about what you want the bylaws to say about the SCC's roles and about absentee ballots and when they can get used and when they can't and all of those things. Because I promise you, listening to you all, you are not gonna get consensus on the past here. It's not gonna happen. And and it and we're not striving for consensus. Uh, this is going to be a, determined by the convention. So whoever shows up is going to make a vote on this question, Tasha. And what we what what obviously we need to agree on is that there's going to be some uh, in our agenda some background information on approving. But so here, actually, here's the deal. Chuck, listen, wait, 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 stop. Drop it, really? drop it, yeah. drop it. No, We're no. We're already approval sending your stuff to the large group consensus. Hey, I don't want to do that. Let's I don't spend the time finish. working on the bylaws that are going to come. It's 9.13. We're going to end the meeting. Okay. We get to the approval of the minutes, which is great. And then your resolutions, approval to go to the okay. large group consensus. Great. Okay. And then here is looking at how he's going to change factual statements about the minutes. So then please suggest anything about there that's not factual. And then let's freaking focus on the new bylaws that I didn't write. I had nothing to do about writing it. I was just present at the meetings and participating. Other people have participated. A lot of people have participated. So let's focus on that. There's two more meeting, meeting, meetings, one on September 9th, one on September 11th. They've been very widely publicized. We've gotten people interested. Let's focus on the new bylaws. That's what's going to resolve the issues. So uh, I let me just say this, Natalie, and to Tasha, assuming that you will be our facilitator at the convention. That this I'm going to beg her. Thank okay, you. okay, that's fine. That this is a perfunctory matter, wherein you simply. So we're going to take a vote. And we're going to end our meeting. And, our, and, I, and I'm going to support a vote that says the SEC recognizes. Well, however, the I don't know what the language says. We should probably have uh, a drop it. Hey, the SEC is not agreeing with you. We drop accept, it. No one, drop we it. accept the findings of the conventions, but note that people who wanted to vote absentee didn't get to, and that the and that and that's a fact and period. So. Then I am in agreement to subject the, the the resolutions to the large group process and go through that and, and engage in that. I'm, I'm happy to get additional feedback and no problem. So then the rest of our agenda, if I'm understanding, is going to be about... Um, Jesus H. Christ, Chuck, do you never stop? Well, stop, Bob. So you yeah, never yeah, yeah. answered my my logical he, fallacy. He, he analogy. agrees with what we've just been talking. Yeah. I'm agreeing, Bob. So Great. quiet Thank down. You. Thank you very much. Let's move God. on. So, I let's look okay. at. How about we plan an agenda that says it's going to take ten minutes to accept the meeting minutes, and that it's going to take 
five minutes to approve Chuck's proposal to send the Liberty Resolutions through the larger group consensus, since there shouldn't be a lot of objection to that? Well, that doesn't even need, I mean, if we want to... I, I think we need it on the agenda. I think we need clarity. So... Okay. So if we if we have 15 minutes for those two things, and and I think it's critically important that, well, I mean, I will say this differently. If there is a bunch of debate about the specific, about what it means to accept the minutes, like my understanding is that what the minutes are is they are a representation of the decisions that got made in the context they were made in, right? The argument that the SCC has been making is that there were procedural challenges there. And I get that there's a strong disagreement about that. Again, I don't think you're going to ever come to consensus on that. I think if we can get the minutes accepted as this is what happened, these are the people who voted, these are the decisions they made, period, right? And we're taking the, because those were small meetings, because whatever, because there's uncertainty, we're going to take those proposals into this larger group consensus process that you've now developed so that the wider membership can talk about them. And in January, under that convention, under new bylaws, you will make decisions about them. Perfect. I think that that's perfect. And you'll get a lot of visibility for your resolutions. Right. But, so, so um, the pause, pause, pause. I see Seth's hand in the air. 30 seconds, Seth. We're way over time. Yeah, since uh, we're approving Chuck's proposal to send the Liberty Resolutions through, I think that since there was a similar problem with the SAW Convention regarding two platform items, one of which was uh, a proposal to uh, limit electrification facilities in low-income areas uh, and 5G technology um, was another one, uh, I think we could have an item that says approval of, of my proposal to send the... 5G and electric electrification platform items from the SIO convention through the large group consensus process. Just to have totally balance. Okay. So that's, is there anybody who has a strong objection to that, to allowing this convention to make a decision about that? Sounds good. Are, so Seth Seth just asked that his complaints about platforms be included in large group consensus. Is that what I heard Seth say? Yeah, let's go through it because the voting at those conventions was also kind of beefy. Well, it, I, it was. Oh, it's been brought up oh, at no. two at two previous conventions. We've done not had time to, to discuss it. Now we have a process to discuss it through large group consensus. Well, you so don't need, that's all you I'm don't, proposing. You, yeah, and you, actually, don't you need, can see who's bringing up the past here. You don't need SEC approval to subject those to as to the large group, Seth. That's available to you. That you're a free agent. You can right, right. But but what he's asking is that it go on the agenda. That's all. Perfect. Well, the, the SEC's job is to plan the agenda, right? Perfect. Thank you. Agree so, to place it uh, as an agenda item. Right. So all we're doing is adding it so that it's planable right perfect thank you very much okay so um so then we have this bylaws conversation which we now have uh an hour for if we can really get through that in 40 in well we may not get through all of that in 15 minutes let's give that 20 minutes since we've also added another item in there okay hopefully so 11 30 to 11 50 oops um and then we start the bylaws discussion at 1150. Um, well, actually, approval of minutes occurs at the very, very beginning of the convention. So that can be actually removed. Okay. I hear you. I. Um, it, so it, it, just it, does it need to second. happen before we say the the honoring the land and read the statement of principles and review the moderation rules and assign roles. I mean, normally when I'm a facilitator, you do all of those things before you do any business. Yes. And hey, Jack, John... uh, you're missing the call. It's still going on. You might be interested. Oh, Dan, uh, we're, we're hearing you, Dan. 
Yeah, I'm talking to Jack. Sorry, I'll mute myself. All right, Jack's been invited. Good. Okay. So the so, uh, you know we're going to finish pretty soon. We're going to have to schedule another meeting. Yes. Sasha, what's your availability? And I and I really uh you you know I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Um. So theoretically, you're supposed to have this agenda out the door on Saturday, mm -hmm. so, according to your procedures. Justin, you're the one who tends to have family uh, family limitations. We do have we we could meet on Saturday morning, for example. But I mean, you tell me what what is your availability? You're the parenting SEC Thanks. member. Thanks. Sorry, I am trying to parent right now as we speak. Um, uh, Saturday. Yeah. What time you want to do it? Ten o'clock. I can't do it before one. Okay. Uh, one o'clock. Do it later in the afternoon. Two? I, well, I don't want to be sports ball guy, but the Ducks do play at noon. <laughs> hey. Two o'clock on Saturday the 2nd to try to finalize the agenda. Can we take 15 minutes and finalize it right now? I think we no, can. No, sweetie. Uh, you know, I, I don't think we can. Uh, I think there's way too much here. You talked a little bit too much. I'm going to run in circles. You but, have to check yourself. Let's not. Let's not make accusations. No, Let's no, just I'm not, find another I'm not saying it in a mean way. It's it's just it is a little bit of a problem. You just I, I really recommend some meetings can go smoother. I get it, but right now we just need to solve this problem. So I am available Friday afternoon, or I could make times work Saturday afternoon. I could also meet Friday evening. Um, or I could meet at. 7.30 on Thursday. Justin. I'm sorry, I'm 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 only available on Saturday or Sunday. I, mean, I can't I can't be available the next two days. I'm so ready. how many people would be available at two o'clock on Saturday the second to finalize the agenda? I will. You, can I see a show of hands? Let's, no, let's Lee, can you give us take us out of screen share again so right. that I can actually sorry, see sorry, everybody? Sorry. Yeah. So Free. SC C members. So Natalie's a yes. Justin is a yes, right? Felipe? Yes, sorry. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I can try my best. Okay. Bob? Looks like he's a yes. Cezia says she's a yes. Who else are we missing who's on the Connor, Connor has his hand up. Is that a yes or a um, hand raised? Yes. Okay. Oh, Connor, yes. Okay, okay. Great. Great. So two o'clock on Saturday. Thank you. We'll all. Finalize the agenda. What's, Let's try what, to do that in an September hour and a half. Up? That's um, that's coming right up. That's the second, isn't it? Yes, it is because your guidelines say that you try to get these things out ten days in advance. Thank you so for that, Tasha. People who are participating, keeping us on point. So, um, all right. So, Nathalie, you will send out a link, a Zoom link for that. We'll, we'll use the same one that we've used tonight today. All right. This, this is the SCC uh, Zoom link uh, available at the Green Party events page. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. So we will try to finalize this. Dan, if you would like to create alternative language and you would like it to appear on the agenda, please have it to us before Saturday the 2nd. I'll join the call if I can. It's already there in the comments on the agenda or the draft on that okay. Google Drop. Yeah, I think we already rejected that language, but thanks for submitting it. It's up to the convention, Justin. What, Ultimately, what, you what, can what, re it's not going to be on the agenda, though, that we draft. That's fine, but but it's available for the convention. So we should consider what we can You can introduce it from the floor as a... An amendment. Let's talk about this on Saturday because I don't know about you, but I'm tired and cranky, and right. this is not the best time to try to make decisions. That's right. So, um, so, uh, such as Natalie, are you scale, seeing Justin. just logistics? Are you seeing the language that Dan's proposing? No, I have no idea what he's proposing. 
So Dan, would you again tell us where to find it, please, so that we know how to. It's in the comments. It's right in the comments. Right okay, we can read Dan. your comments in the what chat or in on the. the it's on the uh, draft agenda. I highlighted that text, the text that the SCC proposed. Okay. And in the sidebar there, when you highlight that, you can post a comment. It's in the oh, Google, no, it's in the Google Doc. Okay, hold on. It's in the Google Doc. I think yeah, I, we just need to refresh. Yeah. Basically it, says, it says Cosmo not. Yeah. So he says to, he wants to remove mention that absentee votes were not sent. That's what Dan wants. That's hiding the facts. Okay, is it <laughs> taken among those present by majority decision of attendees at the convention means factually that absentee ballots were not sent. However, it's no, not it accusatory. doesn't mean that. I want it very clear. It you lacks context. It very clear. It's very clear context and it was part of the convention. Want, pause, you pause, want stop, clear. stop, 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 I, stop. I want it clear. This is, not, this is not going to get resolved. Stop. We're going to vote on it at the convention. We're not going to argue about it anymore. Yes, but I want this. I want this presented equally with what they're proposing. And the yes, but you're not on the SCC, so the SCC, SCC can make SCC does proposal. not. I'm a member. I can make my oh, that's proposal. Good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. This is why you're not qualified to do you this. You don't voted. understand the yeah, rights perfect. of our members. This is official I, misconduct. You yeah. heard Justin say over and over again that we have no rights. Now he wants to say, "Oh, I don't get to show this to anyone." On the draft agenda, they just get to see you what don't. the SEC just well, voted on. It's very simple. Because they want to be dictators of this party. Why are you simple. yelling at me, man? Just the seven of them. You're yelling. It's ridiculous. I, I you know, yeah. You can bring I, it up I give myself me. little liberty after two hours of being subjected to this okay. this oppressive. You're bullshit. just kind of showing your colors right now. Yeah. Your colors, so, dude. Okay, so pause, 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 pause. You all are not going to come to consensus on this. Oh, yeah. You have a fundamental disagreement about this. But I have a fear. I have the right to have my proposal. I understand presented. how you're you do not have a right to yeah, have your no, voice yes. as part of the draft committee. You're not part no, of it. You can submit it. Wait, well, wait, wait, wait. We're going to we're going to highlight during the convention that the people at the convention decided not to send absentee voting. That's totally fine. You can bring your agenda. You can bring your proposal then. And we're going to make it super clear to everybody that that meant that you decided not to send absentee ballots. That's totally fine. And then, you know, we'll have our text, we'll have your proposal text, and then the convention can vote. I want right. my and, text present, presented fairly. Yeah. And we'll definitely make sure that people know that you decided not to send absentee ballots and that you don't want that to be listed. Which, means, which, which is basically fine. saying you're not going to present Perfect. it fairly. Because that's Great. not what I want to say. I think it's going to highlight... Stop, 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 stop. To you stop. All of the minutes. You're stepping on the scales. Stop. They're stop. stepping on the scales, Tasha. You know it. It's, it's, it me, you know what? If you don't stop long scales. enough for me to say anything, you're not going to know where I stand on this. And it's not my decision to make. But as a facilitator, I think what I just heard Nathalie say, though I'm not sure because we all were talking across each other, is that she's fine with sticking this alternate proposal on here so that people are clear that this is the language you want in place. And this is the language that the rest of the SCC or the SCC would like to see instead and let the convention decide. Yes, Nathalie, am I? Absolutely. I that like Great. Points of okay, because Ju Justin said, Justin just a few minutes ago said the exact opposite. I, I heard that, okay. but you didn't stop and let me actually make a process suggestion. Okay. So well, you're I'll just you all arguing with each other without any decision making effectiveness here, which you've been doing a lot of this meeting, all of you. So let's be clear, right? The propo Dan's proposal is that we list his alternative language on the agenda as option B for that language. Now, the confusing part of this, from my perspective, is that what I thought we had agreed was that we were going to take this language and actually integrate it into the minutes that people were reviewing. If we're not doing that, then the meeting approval process is not clean because I, we have I, to decide Tasha, what language Tasha, we're adding instead. Tasha, you're... you're... So the the breakdown here is that Dan is objecting to the prejudice language to be. Included. Dan is objecting to what he's viewing as prejudice language. I yes. hear that. So, but I'm. I think I, I think we should. Well, just, Chuck, yeah. hang on. Let me think about this with you as a process, okay? So, the the goal that I thought we were all talking about was 
trying to make the passing of the minutes go really quickly and easily. And it seemed like what we decided an hour ago or 45 minutes ago was that the way to do that was to insert language, factual language in the minutes themselves that clearly reflected that the members present at the convention voted to limit voting to the people present at the convention and to disallow sending absentee ballots. Despite the fact language. we could say, which we're not saying, right? That when the meeting was publicized, people were invited to request absentee ballots, which sets up an expectation. We're not gonna talk about that, right? We're just gonna say really clearly that that decision got made by the people present at the convention. If that language doesn't get integrated ahead of time into the minutes, then rather than being able to simply pass the minutes, we have to have a whole discussion at the convention about what language we're adding to those minutes. And I don't even know what the procedure for that is. And you probably don't either, because it's probably never happened before. So again, my question to you is, do you want to spend a bunch of your time and energy arguing about the past? Or do you want to focus on how to move forward? Because arguing about specific language in these minutes, which is something I thought we that the committee at least had voted on and resolved, is going to slow that process down without question. I'm willing to accept prejudice language. Dan is objecting to that. I'm I also hear that. I, I'm all what I'm also objecting to, Tasha, and I think I, I mentioned this or tried to make this plain in my emails, is that the SEC doesn't have the power to make this kind of a decision to just unilaterally say, oh, well, we're, we're going to alter the minutes and put this as the proposed minutes to accept. That's a that's a decision of convention. I agree. I agree. Well, but the March and January conventions can't make this decision because they're not in the room. Right. right. So the accepting so, the minutes is, is accepting previous minutes is a decision of convention. Those present. At I convention. understand. And the I think what is going to happen if you leave the minutes as they are, is that you're going to come down to a vote in convention and the odds are fairly high that people are going to reject it. And then what? Then what are you going to do? Why? Are, why do you think the odd? Why do you presume that? You've only been on these calls so far. You haven't been to one of our conventions. And uh, I haven't. Has, no, what happened in the past at the March convention was that the January convention was uh, upheld overwhelmingly. Great. Well, there if are a you lot would more like people involved in this than, in you, that, than you've seen. Well, met yet. I mean, that's the other alternative would be to say, let's spend an hour and a half of the meeting, the convention, talking about this and take it to a vote and see what happens. Okay. Well, we I'm, could just accept the minutes as they are. But, but, well, but you, as you just said, it's going to be put to a vote at the convention. Right. And my suspicion, given that there are five or six people on this call who object strongly to adopting those minutes as they are, that it's not going to get adopted, or at least There's... it's not going to get adopted without a big argument. So again, your question, your decision, y'all, about whether you're going to spend a bunch of time arguing about this or whether you are going to try to focus on the future. And I'm gonna, I think we just need to stop at this point and reconvene on Saturday. But I really want to encourage all of you to think about what is going to be what's in the party's best interest in terms of moving this process forward and focusing on what you want the party to become as opposed to what has happened in the past. Because you are not going to get consensus on the past. You can't even get it in this meeting, much less in with 40 people, many of whom are not going to be as versed in this and are going to need a whole bunch more information or are going to want to talk about it, are going to have a lot of questions. And you could spend your whole convention talking about that. Or you could move some of this other stuff forward and, oh, by the way, get to your campaign stuff and all these other things that I presume are actually important to the party. So this is the decision, right? You can. You can keep spinning, you can keep spinning and keep objecting and keep being sure that you're right. Or you can figure out a way to be connected and focused on the party's future. And I know which way I would advise you to go, but that's not my call. So I think we just need to pause and pick this up again on Saturday. That sounds good, Tasha. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this part of the agenda 
has been approved, we'll move on to the bylaws. Uh, one quick thing, this first in part here is to introduce the large group consensus process. So that this little first thing before. I'm sorry, Natalie, I didn't follow you. Yeah, uh, well, um, let me just uh, show real quick. We may want to review that very briefly without making uh, another uh, zoo about this, but so we've, you know, process agenda, who is facilitator, timekeeper, note taker, blah, blah, blah. Read the principles, consensus, um, but also the rules of conduct, super important. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, review the agenda, introduce large group processes, process, um, and I'm gonna take this out, uh, blah, blah, blah. Take out all the stuff about OPA voting. Yeah, I took it out. And uh, so, and Natalie, we don't need to talk about the campaign finance. We can we can use that time for better business. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's just so key. We just hired a, an organizer. Things are moving like at one hundred percent. We're going to have a big launch of the campaign right before the convention. That, like that's the thing that enthuses people to volunteer. Well, we can, and you can that take is going to be like campaign finance reform is like going to be the most groundbreaking thing next year. So yeah, that's going take to be a 15 the minute, Take a 15 minute infomercial and then let's go back to business. You know we what, we'll need, talk about it next week. You don't week. need 60 Thank minutes. You we'll talk much. about it next week. We're not going here <clears> right now. <throat> Thank you very much, Tasha. We have time. Have a good evening. Um, and I'll send you a glass. Of, do you like red wine? <laughs> I am not a red wine drinker, but I appreciate Wait. the thought. Are you guys having private meetings, Natalie, with wine? No. Is that what I'm understanding? No, we, we are, are not. No, we're okay, not. Good. okay, good to know that. All right. <laughs> stay partial, Tasha. Impartial. I'm just being kind no, and, and no. stay like I do with any business partner that I have. Okay. Thank All you. Right. That's a fair question. Bye. So we're done. All right. See you guys on Saturday.